pull, 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 pull. Don't land it, don't land it. You're trying to land it. There you go. Now you're landing a plane. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we're talking about the five phases of landing. If you divide your landing up into five phases, it allows you to be a little bit more granular about where you're doing well and where you're not. So instead of just saying, oh, that landing sucked, or oh, that landing was good, you can say, well, my approach was good, my round out was good, but boy, I blew that flare, right? So everybody wants to have better landings and dividing it up into these five parts is the first step in getting you there. The first phase is the approach. And you know, what you're looking for in the approach phase is to be stabilized. That is a constant airspeed and a constant rate of descent. When I do this, I do it power off as much as possible, but if you're using power, just know that you're free to manipulate the power. The two things you want constant are your airspeed and your rate of descent. You want to be using an aiming point, all right? So as you approach the runway, assuming you're stabilized, you're gonna look for that point in the windscreen that's not moving. There's only one point in the window uh, from which everything kind of emanates. And learning to identify that point is key. By the way, if you're interested in like CFI tips and tricks on how, I mean, I, I'm gonna go deep on this in Patreon and talk about exercises instructors can do and that sort of thing. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm trying to get through all five phases. So the approach, again, has to be stabilized and you have to be using an aiming point. Now, in my little model here, we're gonna say that that little rectangle is our aiming point. This is the one point in your windscreen from which everything is emanating. Nice, just hold 65 and then just tell me what the aiming point is. Okay, so I'm traffic. One, one White stripe Grumman past on three right zero. downwind for three zero. I think it's a bit further down than that, like fourth stripe past three zero. One, two, three, four, five, actually four or five. Okay. Five, the fifth stripe is the one. Now notice that Rob and I are at a long runway. We are not pre-selecting the aiming point at this phase in his training. We are simply learning to identify the aiming point. We've got power to idle. We've got our approach speed, so we're approaching the runway at the proper speed, powers to idle, and then we're playing that game of looking out the window saying, what is the aiming point? Can we identify it? If you can't identify that point, you're gonna have a really tough time setting it yourself. So as you're approaching the runway, the next phase is the round out. You round out when some point about 100 feet in front of your aiming point begins to disappear under the cowling. Now this is an approximation, but that should give you an indication of when you should start to transition your vision to the end of the runway and round out the airplane. When the stripe in front of it, not the one you're looking at, but the one in front of it disappears. starts to disappear, coming up soon, soon right here. Good, now gently look all the way down the runway. Yep. This is when the flare begins. Now the flare is this concept of holding it off the ground or not letting it land, kind of teasing the energy out of the wings such that in a perfect world, the main wing stalls at the exact moment the main wheels touch the ground. Nose high, pull, 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 pull. Don't land it, don't land it. You're trying to land it. There you go, now you're landing a plane. Now the touchdown has to be over the center line and aligned with the runway. So you would say, I want the longitudinal axis of my airplane aligned with and over the center line of the runway. Most rough landings, in my experience, are due to a lack of alignment and not due to an actual hard touchdown. You can drop that airplane from a foot or two, and if you're, you know, lined up with the runway, the spring steel is gonna, is gonna save that. But if you're so much as a little bit out of alignment, it's gonna feel weird when you hit the ground. So you really have to work on being aligned with the runway, aligned with the center line and over the center line. We really have to get Rob going over the center line. Um, that's not a battle I'm fighting at this phase in his training, but it's a battle we have to fight and win before he solos. The rollout is this concept of flying it all the way to the tie down. So you keep pulling back and pulling back and pulling back until the elevator 
sort of gives up on its own, right? You don't want to derotate the airplane. This isn't a big jet. You kind of want to stall it onto the ground, keep pulling back, and eventually the nose wheel will settle down to the ground, and now you are flying it to the tie down. You're positioning the flight controls for the effects of wind during taxi, keeping your attention on the rollout, not responding to air traffic control until you've cleared the runway, stopped the airplane, now you can talk to air traffic control, perform your after landing checklist, and begin the flight to your tie down spot. Pull, pull. That's what it looks like when you're landing. There we go. Remember that. Let the nose give up on its own. There you go. You should always just kind of pull until the nose yep. kind of gives up. Now there were a couple times when Rob and I were out there practicing where his airspeed was not stabilized, he was not on target, and in those circumstances, just practice a go around. Get yourself conditioned to this thought that if I'm not stabilized on final approach, I'm going to go around. A go around is something you're tested on, on your practical test. It's a skill that you have to have down. It's a great opportunity to practice using right rudder as you add power, first power, then flaps, and then pitching to a climb attitude and making the call. So it's always good to practice go arounds if your approach is not stabilized simply go around. So this approach you're a lot lower and a lot slower. Yeah. So it's a different kind of sight picture than the other two. Just yeah. Being this, aware of that. This feels a little more like what I'm supposed where I'm supposed to be though? Um, right, in terms of, of the angle and maybe in space but not with this much drag and power. Okay. Yeah. Maybe gliding, sure. But now watch what happens. You're slow on the flare here. Okay. Power, you know, I mean, power comes yeah. out. If anything's wrong, just go around. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. I hope that you got a lot out of that. And the next time you go flying, whenever that is, um, definitely consider those five things. So after your landing, think, how was my approach, my round out, my flare, my touchdown, and my rollout? Um, no landing is simply good or bad. It's those five parts that make the difference. A huge thanks to the sponsors for their support of this show and to the patrons. If you want bonus content and you want to follow along with Joe, my IFR student, all the way through his rating, please come visit me at patreon.com slash learn TFP. Also, if you want a free gift video, please come to learnthefinerpoints.com. A huge thanks to you, the best fans on the internet, for watching this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, all that YouTube stuff. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.